Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-3140. Containment Class, Safe. Disruption Class, Dark. And Risk Class, Caution. Special Containment Procedures SCP-3141 is stored in an enlarged containment hangar at Armed Containment Area 40 in an inactive state with access to an underground testing area. Any testing must be approved by Level 4 3140 personnel. During testing, the 3140S subject must be watched by researchers and security outside of the testing area. Upon conclusion of the testing, the anomaly must be deactivated and brought to its chamber. Investigations into the uses of SCP-3140 in Davik society and whether other instances of the anomaly exist are ongoing. Revision 1. Level 4 3140 approval is required for the planting of seeds recovered from SCP-3140 instances. The guidelines in Document 3140 HRT-1 must be followed for the initial planting. Revision 2. SCP-3142 and SCP-3143 will be stored in enlarged containment hangars at Botanical Garden Beta. Level 4 3140 approval is required for testing with either or both of anomalies. Description SCP-3141 is the only extant member of SCP-3140, a group of arboreal entities. SCP-3141's body primarily consists of Cupressus gigantea and Prunus serrulata bark and wood, standing at a height of 12 meters. The torso of its body is roughly spherical, with multiple flowering cherry branches and small cherry trees growing from it. The anterior side has a stylized eye etched into it, which is surrounded by illustrations of Davic weaponry, cultural symbols, and skulls with seven eye sockets. The posterior portion has a circular thalmic glyph pattern, or TGP, with a radius of 26 centimeters which prevents fire and erosion damage. Three anterior facing wooden barrels, one meter long and 28 centimeters wide, with a single hole on the front are on the torso. One is attached above the right leg, one extends from a dorsal branch on the right side, and one is positioned one meter left of the eye symbol. Two wooden digitigrade legs are connected to the sides of the anomaly. These legs possess full articulation, due to the wood at the joints being intermixed with an unknown green and pink substance, designated 3140C. The legs are ornately carved with iconography of Davite soldiers killing and eating people. Soldiers with unidentified megafauna and entities resembling SCP-3140 besieging castles and cities and slaves being given to the Deva matriarchs. The bottom left of the leg features a hand-shaped recess with a depth of 11 centimeters, with the phrase, For the Conqueror written in Davik found in the center. The feet have three long toes, two anterior, and one posterior. In an inactive state, SCP-3141 sits in a crouching position. Any subject, hereafter designated 3140-S, that places their left hand in the hand-shaped recess and says the Davic word for awaken, will activate SCP-3141, making it stand upright. The anomaly will begin to follow 3140-S and will follow directions said in Davic. Directions that SCP-3141 is incapable of achieving will not be followed. Saying the Davic word for sleep will bring the anomaly back to its inactive state. Any 3140-S may reactivate SCP-3141 at any time by saying awaken within the anomaly's vicinity in any language. The following are a sample of known directions SCP-3141 will follow, all spoken in Davic and the outcomes. Move. SCP-3140 moves to a location 3140-S points to. Stomp SCP-3141 moves to and stomps at a location 3140-S points to. Stab Various bone spikes, roughly 25 centimeters long, emerge from every surface of the anomaly. These retract after one minute. Slide a mix of translucent, low-viscosity substances cover SCP-3141, falling off of it after three minutes. Bring help. 
SCP-3141 secretes a substance similar to alarm pheromones of an extant insect species for two minutes. Heal. Resin seeps from random locations on the anomaly, primarily around the barrels. Fire. Smoke emerges from the barrels on SCP-3141. See Document 3140 See List for further commands. SCP-3141 was discovered at a Foundation archaeological dig site near Bakudo, Jammu, and Kashmir, Republic of India on 27th of January, 2017. The dig site appeared to have at one point been the location of a battle between Davite forces and an unknown Artofan group based on the presence of non-anomalous weapons and armor possessing acute heptagrams, sometimes surrounded by other polygons. Regular polygons, ranging from four to seven sides, and humanoid figures with four to seven arms. Said battle is believed to have occurred at some point in the early Low Davic period, circa 11,000 BCE, suspected to be the Century Conquest. Around SCP-3141's legs were chained leg cuffs made of meteoric iron, locked with a complex mechanical system with the phrase, Ruination to the Invaders, written in Ortothan on both cuffs. The chains had been heavily damaged, likely from attempts to break them. The remnants of an SCP-3140 instance were found at dig sites in the vicinity, which had damaged legs and a destroyed torso. The torso's remains had a solidified mass of miscellaneous plant matter and bone fragments in it, connected by multiple small roots. Other objects in the area included bones, weaponry, and armor. All artifacts, the destroyed instance, and SCP-3141 were transported to Area 40 on 29th of January, 2017. Based on texts found in SCP-1726 and SCP-140, SCP-3140 were a common weapon utilized by the Davic Empire during and after the Century Conquest, though it is suggested that the anomaly had predated Davite civilization. Thaumaturgic horticulture methods would be used to grow different variations of the entities, primarily designed for military application. Below are several text excerpts detailing the growth and usage of SCP-3140 in Davite society. Translated. Next to the prisoner slaughtering grounds, I saw a massive farm. It stretched out from the clearing, which I estimated to be 60 erves long, 50 erves wide, and past the corpses, possibly farther. I estimate the clearing to be 61 erves. Many growing and grown a moon during the plots, possibly 100 or more. The area has less guards, though many experienced presence ether benders occupy it. A hill in an unguarded region gave the perfect view and the Holy Ray's tube, praise the elemental holies, improved it. Davik, death to the brutes, ether benders walked the columns and would stop by the mature and crouched ones, then retrieve objects from their red robes. Ether black would flash in their hands as they retrieved the materials and inserted them into the amunj, which rippled like water during the process. I could not easily glimpse the materials for they were clouded by the ether black air, but the Holy Ray's tube praise the elemental holies, illuminated spirit residual outlines of bone and flesh. After the process ended, a quick change would occur to the golem, tentacles like the deepers. I suggest an investigation to see if a deeper pact was formed. Cannons of great size and with many barrels and spikes to rival our spears all grew instantaneously. The ether benders would move on to the next and a soldier would lead slaves likely captured warriors by chain to the wooden beast. They were all starved and scarred, and trembled with every step. If they did not begin to etch Davik, death to the brutes, victories and violence onto the golems, a small rod would be stabbed into their back and they would immediately return to work. Some of these artists had dozens stuck into them. Correspondence from Katine Diraj to Weissard Anton circa 11,030 BCE, of the early Antipa, describing an overview of a Davite provisional camp, document 1726-503. The first attackers were Davic soldiers, who emerged from the jungle at the early sunrise to assault the gateway. Luckily, our warriors were as prepared as the Tenth Y prophesied and promised, for they had a great many traps, weapons, and strong fortifications. 
Our arches up on the wall did little to assist them, and the onlookers up here, myself included, cheered. We knew the Davide Empire was the greatest to ever exist, so this victory was truly glorious. I was nervous, though. The countless stories of endless victories and the taming of the great beasts that belonged in other realms came back to me. An attack with so few soldiers seemed wrong. After a Jolan had passed with no new action, the crowd around the arches grew smaller, but our good warriors stood strong with anticipation. Another Jolan later, most had left to return to their homes in or around the inner city, and the arches began to speak about unrelated events. Unusually, the chimes of safety had not rung despite the apparent victory. That was when I heard a rumble and saw trees swaying from my window. Suddenly, three large beings of wood and leaves rose above the horizon. Their bodies were like castles of wood, and their legs were larger than any tree trunk I have seen in my hunt. Each had vast numbers of Davites scrambling along stairwells lined with bark plating on the exterior and on fortified platforms covered by large trees. Strange pink and blue flowers blossomed all over. A few holes I could see on their fronts suggest they have an interior as well. The hundred cannons fired in unison from the top and middle of the wall, but the tree beasts kept walking. More and more were fired, and only small pieces of the things would shatter. The ground troops were being attacked from all sides by smaller wood creatures, some still taller than any man. I saw a man have spiked vines wrap around his body and rip him like cloth, and another was impaled by several wooden spikes. The traps and barricades were stepped on and broken, and the archers and cannon workers were killed by Davite's arrows. As they got closer to the top of the wall, I grabbed all I could and ran from my home and into the city. A jaw later, I heard the chimes of invasion ring from all around. Written by Matrani John in his personal diary, circa 10,950 BCE, describing the invasion of the Alut city-state by Davite troops. Document 1726, 991. Clouds swelled in the sky as my boat sailed along the coast. As with all sunk creations, it was efficient and simple, but I feared it would collapse at any moment. After an Uro, I was able to see the edge of the Etan clan's village. The rest was hidden in dense foliage. The Masson Codexes claim the clan to be a relic of Empire Davik, a fragment of Davik. A much debated idea, as none could verify from risk of death or worse. This day I could see well that they were fragment, Davik. Huts and sculptures of bone were common, occasional villagers and guards walking around. The only crop I saw was a large and thin tree, growing slices of meat on the branches. Guards would grab a slice and eat, and another would grow soon after, a likely solution for the few animals and humans that could be fed on. Small Uosho, wood deities tamed and used for war, were fishing, using tens of arms on their fronts. Once all arm claws had grabbed a fish, they would drop them into a basket that would then be put into a hole on another Uosho. This one would then trudge into the forest, vanishing. This repeated without end. Illustrated Modern World Travels, circa 800 BCE, an incomplete book describing the author's journey to learn about the cultures and societies in Central and East Asia. Sketches of the described locations are also present, though most of them are poor in quality, and many passages are largely incoherent. The writer is presently unknown. Document 1726-24 Full texts and artwork related to SCP-3140 instances can be found in Document 3140 historical documents. The use of SCP-3140 decreased over time, gradually replaced in favor of thaumaturgic mechanical weapons. However, some David clans continued to use the entities for hard labor, farming, and protection. The last remaining ones are suspected to have been destroyed by forces under Chinese General Jing Kai, circa 270 BCE. Addendum 1. On 1st of March 2017, Two seeds, designated 3142 and 3, retrieved from SCP-3141 were planted in an enlarged botanical garden, Botanical Garden Beta, in Area 40, following Davite horticulture instructions found in Documents 1726-801 and 1726-822. 
compiled in Document 3140 HRT. Said instructions utilized multiple anomalous compounds and thaumaturgic rituals carried out by Thaumaturgy Division personnel. SCP-3142 would be grown without modifications being made, while SCP-3143 would be grown for use in farming. By May, several wooden spheres with small branches extending from them had grown, and by July, growths resembling legs had formed. Addendum 2 On 5th of September 2017, SCP-3142 and 3 had fully grown and had broken out of their dirt plots. Following their relocation to separate containment chambers, testing regimens began. SCP-3142 is largely the same as SCP-3141, though it lacks any inscriptions, etchings, or barrels. The anomaly is unresponsive to the fire command. The leading explanation for the lack of barrels is that they were added to the entity after it had fully grown, which is unlikely to carry over to offspring. Research into adding these onto the anomaly is ongoing. SCP-3143 lacks the same features as SCP-3142, and has a largely different body structure than SCP-3140. The entity has a height of 4 meters and a 3 meter wide torso. The underside possesses a mass of tendrils made of wood and 3140C, each of which have a different structure. Personnel have successfully used SCP-3143 in the cultivation of soybeans, rice, turmeric, and sugarcane with various commands, using the tendrils to achieve this. However, the process is slower than existing mechanical farming methods. Further research is being performed to see if SCP-3140 instances could be utilized by the Foundation, which includes tests to see if instances could learn new commands after growth. Okay, I think that about does it for today. Thank you for listening, if indeed you still are, and you are all dismissed. Goodbye. I would like to give a special thank you to Zargaran, Big Sip, Okrapkai, Trey Adams, the Morrigan, James Saba, Irish Wristwatch, Lost Boy, Your Local Foundation Agent, Signar, Zazapan, Worthy Fire, Dr. Wolf 13, Cupster, Dean Dingus, Braided Peach, Rowan O'Brien, Kegnak, Grimnir, Extra Moments 123, Swift Raw, and James Wright. If you would like a special thank you at the end of each of my videos, and some other cool stuff as well, visit patreon.com forward slash thevolgan. Thank you.